Good morning. My name is Adriana Velasquez. I'm the Senior Advisor for Medical Devices in the World Health Organization, and I'm very pleased to be with you today to celebrate the Clinical Engineering Day. Thank you for all our colleagues in China that are hosting this event. Well, to start, let me tell you that the Sustainable Development Goals were launched in September 2017, and there are 17 of them. And the number three of them is the good health and well-being. If we all try to work together towards these sustainable development goals, we will make a big difference in our world. So we count on you. When we go specifically to number three, uh, we acknowledge that the medical devices are required to achieve the sustainable development goals. That means that there is uh, universal health coverage, including financial risk protection, access to quality essential health care services. And as you can see in the access, you we have to define which is the population that receives the benefit, which is the intervention that we have to do, and how much does it cost, so that then we can get all these interventions uh, for the better well-being of society. And please know that we need specialized and trained human resources. We need guidelines how to practice. We need medical devices. We need medicines. We need infrastructure and the financing that goes with it. So, and as you can see, uh, please note that the logo of um, Sustainable Development Goal number three is an EKG sign. So that means we need the medical devices. <coughs> we have a new director general in WHO. And what he says is that together we should make a better and healthier world. And it has three missions. Number one is to promote health. Number two is keep the world safe. Number three is serve the vulnerable. And the three strategic priorities are to have one billion more people with health coverage, one billion more people made safer, and one billion lives improved. So how can we help? Dr. Tedros, how can we help WHO? How can we help the United Nations in the Sustainable Development Goals? And what is the role of the clinical engineers there? Well, first of all, we need qu safe, quality, effective, and affordable health products that play a key role in achieving these three billion goals. And out of them, and you can see, we have the medical devices, we have in vitro diagnostics, among many other uh, health products that we need to achieve these three goals, as you can see in this slide. Then when we talk about medical devices, many people say, are they the same as medical equipment or not? Well, medical devices is the term that hosts everything. As you can see in this uh, green uh, image, then we have the medical software, we have in vitro diagnostics, we have all the medical equipment, all the imaging equipment, all the implantable devices, uh, etc. And all of them, they are medical devices. Some of them even interact with assistive devices, with protective devices, and with ICT products to be like a combination products. But all of them are the aspect in which the biomedical engineering should work with and the clinical engineer should manage. So we need to make sure that the medical devices are needed at each level of healthcare. And therefore, clinical engineers need to make sure that these are appropriate to each of the setting. It doesn't matter if it is in a health post, a health center, and even home, and then we go to the district hospitals, and then we go to specialized uh, hospitals and regional hospitals. So we need to make sure that technology is available in all these uh, healthcare facilities, and it is managed well. We have to define which are the devices that go in each of these settings. And for this, WHO is doing already the guidelines and interventions and the list of medic priority medical devices that should go for each of these settings or for life courses. As you can see here, for reproductive maternal newborn and child or for cancer care or now we're doing for cardiovascular stroke and, um, and COPD. Uh, but we're also doing the essential diagnostic list, and that will help us bring what are the laboratory, the tests that need to be there from primary healthcare and uh, in laboratories and national reference laboratories. We are also um, concerned about which are the new technologies that are available. And what we did with this compendium is we bring together all the t new technologies that might be needed in low resource settings. Some of them are reusable, some of them can run without electricity, some can be with, uh, running without uh, specialized human resources, and that is how technology can go more into the 
uh, different uh, levels of the system to be able to tackle and diagnose earlier and so that we can treat patients earlier. In the WHO resolution uh, 6729, especially it says that we need to do procurement and management of health technologies, in particular medical devices, in collaboration with personal in health technology assessment and biomedical engineering. And this is really for the assessment and planning that the clinical engineer plays a big role. So as you see here, the steps to increase when we were talking about innovation, the, the, the way that we uh, have to step the steps to increase the access to appropriate good quality and safe medical devices after the product is innovative. Then we need to regulate it to make sure that it is safe and performance in, in quality. Then we have to select it through the health technology assessment, and then we go to health technology management. And this, in all these areas, the clinical engineering has a big role to play, especially in the blue area in the health technology management. So we use these uh, images for all the medical devices technical series in which you come from the innovation uh, on the top, and then you go to the regulation, the green one, and then you go to the health technology assessment, and then you start with all the blue section that is on clinical engineering and health technology management, which also has to manage uh, innovations and new devices besides all the traditional ones and make sure that they are used uh, safely and appropriately in the health services. To gather all this information, we have put uh, placed all this information in the Global Atlas of Medical Devices, which includes global, regional, and country profiles. And this can be uh, found in the WHO Medical Devices website. And here we find, for example, some issue that is important is the nomenclature system of medical devices. As you can see in the right side, it is uh, very diverse. We really would like to have a better harmonized system. So anything that we can harmonize will make our lives easier. In order to see what is the role of the biomedical engineers in all these flowchart that I showed to you, is um, uh, it's described in the book Human Resources for Medical Devices, the role of the biomedical engineers. There you have country information, regional information, educational institutions, professional societies, and all the roles in the life cycle of the medical devices from conception to use. And uh, here we use the clinical engineers as health technology managers of all these technologies. When we tried to map out how many are there, uh, we found and this information which is displayed in these graphics. And as you can see, the purple and the blue is now growing wider and bigger and larger and to many more countries, which we are very happy. And this includes medical engineer, biomedical engineers and even um, biomedical engineering technicians. So we hope these numbers will be on the rise and then we can get many more of them in, um, in the ministries of health and managing technology in hospitals and health centers and all across the life health uh, of the people. When we want to do, what we want to do in WHO is to compile all this information into MEDEVIS, that's the medical device information system. And the elements that you can see here is that we take care of new devices, so these are like uh, innovative technologies, then we take uh, what are the regulatory aspects of them, if we have anything about the country and the cost effectiveness, if we have the clinical interventions that they are linked with, and then we have also the nomenclature that really links them all together, that we can define what are the medical devices that are needed in, by healthcare uh, facility, as you can see in the yellow box. But we also have all the blue box that is very important, technical specifications for procurement of each of these devices, and then some information about the cost so that we can do planning and budgeting, the operation and the maintenance, and finally, all the market uh, information. So all of this information, we would like to have it together to show it and to share it with countries, but we need your help. We need the help of all of those that can uh, support us with their information, with their expertise to make this possible. And uh, we will share all our different expertise and knowledge in the fourth global forum of medical devices. I cordially and as WHO, we invite you all to participate there. It takes place in India. It will be in Vishakapatanam, the 13th to 15th of December. You are most all welcome and please find the information in the website. Then finally, what I want to share with you is the idea of getting harmonization, convergence, so that uh, 
we need your help in order to have a harmonized nomenclature, naming codes for nomenclature of medical devices. Uh, secondly, harmonized procedures for procurement, harmonized technical specifications, harmonized connectivity among the devices for data exchange, harmonized training for safe and appropriate use of medical device, and harmonized standards. If we can achieve that, then it will be make it much easier for the users of the technology, for the procurers, for the regulators, and for those that are planning uh, healthcare services. So if we see towards the future, what we would like? Well, first of all, there is a need to have a competent clinical engineers around the world, especially in low resource countries. Secondly, there is no sufficient training opportunities to fill this need. We must develop more academic programs and regional uh, internships, for example, and programs. I really would like to commend all clinical engineers to spend some time in healthcare facilities because when, they, when you spend time in a hospital, that's when you really learn the importance of every piece of technology, how it's been used, how it's been needed by the patients, how the healthcare work uses it, how it comes into the system, and how to use it safely. Then having uh, a shared work with societies, with professional societies, with the academics, with the uh, UN organizations and through collaborating centers, it is among all of us that we can make a change. So, and then whatever we do, we need to publish it. We need to make it visible to the other professionals that are making decisions. So I really look forward to working with all of you, to invite you to be active in your field, to share your expertise, and to work all together towards a better healthcare services for all. Thank you very much. Shishi. Shokran, spasiba, merci.